Herman Holst is anointed the new president of Sony Worldwide Studios and PlayStation boss Jim Ryan explains the restructuring and roadmap for the PS5 generation. Hi, how you doing? Welcome, I'm Venom. PlayStation CEO Jim Ryan has given a substantial interview to GamesIndustry.biz and it would seem that his motivation is to answer questions and quell any fears in the media about how he is running the business. In the process he talks about buying new studios, PS Now expansion and whether it will include new Sony first party games, cloud gaming, its new European base and whether it's still committed to PSVR. He also shares some tidbits of PS5 info, including why it's been so good for developers. So make sure to watch to the end to hear all about that. Subscribe now for future updates. Right, there's so much to talk about today. Let's begin. The headline news is that Herman Holst is the new head of SIE Worldwide Studios. He takes over the role that was previously held by Shuhei Yoshida. Now Herman Holst, he's the co-founder and managing director of Guerrilla Games, the studio behind Horizon Zero Dawn and Killzone. The studio was bought by Sony back in 2005, so the company have had a good chance to know who he is and how he works. Guerrilla Games is also behind the Decima game creation engine, which is exclusive to Sony. And this was used famously recently with Death Stranding. It's been renowned for basically getting the best performance out of the PS4. So in all this time, Sony had a good chance to see how he works, what he can do and how he can lead a team. And evidently, Jim Ryan thinks that he should be able to do this now, representing all of the Sony studios, worldwide studios. So what are the worldwide studios? Sony has 14, 15 first party developers that each make their own different games within the company. This includes, of course, Guerrilla Games, Ben Studio, Insomniac, London Studio, and Naughty Dog. Now his promotion is effective immediately, which means he's now the president of worldwide studios. Jim Ryan said about him, he is a European who will be taking one of the major offices at PlayStation. I think everybody in Europe should be thrilled and happy and proud that this is happening. Herman is one of the most effective and well-respected leaders in the video game industry. He is a passionate advocate for the teams he leads and understands how to empower creative talent to build great experiences. I have no doubt Herman can lead our teams to deliver compelling and diverse experiences at a steady cadence. So this is big praise indeed from the top Sony man. So Host, he's gonna be in charge of making sure that all these different studios, he's going to be in charge of managing them making sure that they are focusing on the right games, the right products that are essential for PS5. And he comes across as charismatic and definitely a strong leader. It is interesting that Ryan mentions that everybody in Europe should be proud that this is happening. It's unclear what he means exactly by this. Maybe he means that one of Europe's sons is doing well, has succeeded in a very important role. But it could indicate that maybe, Jim Ryan being British, that maybe there is a shift with PlayStation of moving its focus towards Europe. It's too early to say about that, but it's something to bear in mind for the future. And Holst himself, he also made a statement about it. He said, I have worked closely with PlayStation and the entire Worldwide Studios family since 2001, and I have the utmost respect and admiration for the creative talent and ambitious ideas within the network of studios across the US, Europe, and Japan. If you recall, Sean Layden, he was the chairman of Worldwide Studios. He was the most senior figure, but now Herman Holst will be the most senior figure in the division. So what's happened to Shuhei Yoshida? He was the president. He now leaves the role for a new role as head of indie developer relations. In this role, he will be helping smaller external studios have support to make PS5 games. So for games that are still incubating, that are early in development, he can give them design advice, practical advice, as well as approving funding for games that he thinks will complement the PlayStation platform. The role will be celebrating external developers that are creating new and unexpected experiences. I did wonder if this is somewhat of a demotion in some ways, but the way Jim Ryan is speaking about it, he, he feels that this is the best fit for Shuhei Yoshida. He says, Everybody knows just how passionate Shu is about independent games. They are lifeblood of the industry, making our content portfolio so special for our gamers. These wildly creative experiences deserve focus and a champion like Shu. 
And Shuhei Yoshida, he's this really charismatic, very lively person. He's been the face of PlayStation in many ways for a few years now. He was the one who was behind Project Morpheus in many ways. He talked it up before it became PSVR. He's been very vocal about why he believes virtual reality is important for gaming. So he, he's one of these people who gets behind the game. Herman Haas tweeted, Super excited for Yospi's new role. Couldn't think of a better champion for independent game devs with his encyclopedic knowledge of games and unmatched network in the industry. We love you, Shu. Yoshida retweeted it, which goes to show there's no bad blood. I mention this because when Sony tweeted that Sean Layden had left, he did not engage with it in any way. No like, no comment, no retweet. And he gets on well with many developers and publishers. Shahid Kamal Ahmad is an indie game developer who previously was the strategic content director at Sony and he played a big part in winning the No Man's Sky exclusive for PlayStation. He was also very vocal and loyal to NMS creator Sean Murray when critics attacked his character and called him dishonest for not delivering on what No Man's Sky was believed to be. So he tweeted, Appointing Yosp to this new role is the most incredible move in developer engagement I've seen in years. Well done PlayStation and Yoshida-san. And that's really significantly high praise indeed. So at the end of the PS3 generation, or nearing the end of it, Sony, they received a lot of respect, a lot of praise for supporting these indie developers, helping bring these smaller titles to the attention of people. And over the past two, three years, the Nintendo Switch, it has had a great response with indie games. And there is a feeling in some quarters that the PS4 hasn't been supporting the indie developers as much. But maybe this perception is a wrong one. Certainly that's what Jim Ryan says. We feel this is not a question of us coming back to the indies because we feel like we've never left. I would just point to the amount of engagement that PlayStation has made with that community over the course of the last three to five years in the VR space. People tend to forget about this, but the amount of indie engagement with VR is actually really very significant. We are very active with them. We've been engaged with human resource We've been very financially supportive. We've been sharing experiences as people start to learn about what makes a great VR experience. I think we've always been there with the indies and when they were fascinated and engaged with virtual reality, that's when we pivoted our engagement with them. So our work with the indie community has remained at the levels that it was during the early days of PS4. Why is there all this change? The past few months have been filled with news about staff changes at PlayStation. Redundancies in the London office, high profile executive departures, job shifts and now promotions. What's going on? So PlayStation has traditionally had multiple regional divisions for Europe and for North America, Japan, Asia. And when a game was released, they would all promote or market it their own way. So what Sony is now going to be doing is combining these divisions into a single entity to take a unified approach to creating products and to marketing. And this is really a necessary step for PlayStation to reposition itself as a truly global brand for the next generation and beyond. And this has already helped with the design process of the PlayStation 5. Ryan says, the productization of the PlayStation 5, the definition of the feature set, of the development and the implementation of those features, that process, this time around, has been massively more streamlined compared to anything we've done in the past. The product planners are now having one conversation instead of three different regional conversations where they needed to reconcile positions that were often conflicting or contradictory with an endless process of iteration and consensus. That's not happening anymore. We have one conversation and we get on and do stuff. So this is good news to hear about the PS5, but it does make you wonder what was going on with the PS4. Maybe that every decision, every idea had to be approved by a three different division across the world, with each one having a say on whether it's a good idea or not a good idea. Interpreting what Ryan said here, he is saying there is a single team creating the PS5 console, and I'm wondering if um, <laughs> the single person leading it is Mark Cerny. But that means that they are not having to spend time making sure that they keep other people happy, having to play off its politics and hopefully we'll see that Sony produces a really good machine. This unified approach is also going to be used with marketing. So Spider-Man's marketing was the first global campaign for a PS4 game and it also ended up as PlayStation's best-selling first party game. So it demonstrated that it was a big success for having a unified approach. And this is something that Sony is going to continue doing going forward. It doesn't mean that Sony is going to be blind to the regional variations of different territories. So Sony is currently running a new global brand campaign and it's the same campaign for each of the three main territories. 
However, in each territory, a different product is being highlighted. So FIFA football in Europe, in the US, Fortnite, and in Japan, it's going to showcase Final Fantasy VII Remake. So the campaign is universal, but they are tailoring it for each country or each region. And, and this echoes the universal approach that uh, brands like Apple take, where they are able to launch a product and advertise it worldwide. Or also this happens with big major blockbuster movies, such as a DC Heroes film like Joker. So Sony is also investing in European markets in Central Europe. These are Eastern European countries, nations such as Bulgaria, Romania, the Czech Republic and Hungary. To get a good team of staff in a central location, it might mean that they are more efficient as well. But it's also good to have talent on a worldwide basis, not just in the US, not just in Japan or even London, but in Central Europe as well. So what about cloud gaming? Cloud gaming is going to be a part of the future of PlayStation. Ryan says, I would say that our organizations and the way that we work will, by definition, need to evolve to keep pace with the change in how people play games, how games are distributed, how games are made, and the way games are consumed. I think that process of change is inexorable. Ryan seeks to allay any fears people may have about cloud gaming. He says that everybody has been used to physical game distribution, buying games on physical disc or cartridges. And the move to digital, there was some caution about it, some trepidation. However, this move has been very successful and he believes it's a key part of why the PlayStation Network and PlayStation has been able to grow to a, a user base of over 100 million users. And likewise, whilst we are used to the current system of buying games either on disc or digitally, the market will change, technology will change. Of course it's going to. This is a technology run business that is never gonna remain the same or remain static. And so Sony is looking ahead. They can see this, they are seeing this, this change. They are aware of what's happening with the Epic Game Store. They're aware of what's happening with Google Stadia. They are prepared for it. And he says that PlayStation is optimistic. So it's not going to be a case that Sony is going to try and stop one avenue from growing in favor of cloud gaming. Rather, it's going to offer the service and as technology grows and as the needs of people want to use it more, then that's probably likely to be offered more widely and with better features. So it's going to be there when the public wants it, when the public is ready for it. What about VR? So when it comes to VR, Sony is still committed to VR. They are number one in the market, market leader in virtual reality. And the company is definitely committed to the category. I mean, we've heard this, we know that they're working on a PSVR 2 device. So Sony is committed to VR and look out for big offers around Black Friday and for Christmas. PS Now is Sony's cloud gaming service. This year, there's been a lot of coverage of xCloud and Google Stadia, but Sony, they've had this product, they've had this service running for five years, but they haven't always been promoting it as heavily as they could be. Until very recently, Sony dropped the price of PS Now, and that resulted in a 50% increase in subscribers to 1 million customers in just 30 days. Now, Microsoft, they've now launched their Xbox Game Pass subscription service. And a notable feature of it is that they're now including all their first party titles from launch day, free if you pay the subscription. Is Sony going to be doing this? And the short answer is no. The nature and scale of some of the first party games that we are making leads us to think that right now, it's better to spend energy on making sure that the launch of those games is a massive entertainment event. I would cite God of War and Spider-Man and The Last of Us 2 next year will fall into that category. So Sony has spent so much money on these games, these first party games. These are games that many people are looking forward to and because there is so much hype for them, because there is so much demand for them, there is definitely a market for people buying these and spending that money and for Sony to, and for Sony to get back that investment. So for the moment, right now, this is not the right plan for Sony. It's not out of the question for the future and Sony will judge the market depending on how it changes. What he goes on to say is, certainly right now, given how some of our first party IP is incredibly special and valuable, we just want to treat them with amazing care and respect and have those launches be clean and pure. And as a business, of course Sony is going to be look at what Microsoft is doing with the Xbox service. For a massive game like The Last of Us Part 2, that's likely going to be one of the console, the PS4 console's biggest sellers. And it would just seem a waste of opportunity, a waste of profit to give that included with PS Now when it can go on and have this opportunity to make so much money. How is Sony approaching buying new studios? 
what's their attitude to buying new studios? At the moment, they are looking, but they are taking a very cautious approach because they want to make sure that any studio they buy has to fit in with the culture of Sony and that they will also complement the company as well. Because in history, there are many, many examples of studios, developers that have been bought out by a larger company, a larger publisher, and then they have not fitted so well and that studio has ended up closing down or being absorbed. What is interesting to learn from all the whole interview is that when it comes to buying studios, it is apparently a seller's market. And this may be because Microsoft has been so aggressive and is so rich when it comes to buying studios that it means many companies are looking to sell their themselves to Microsoft or Sony or whoever. We are always looking, but we are careful about who we look at and talk to. It's interesting why they have to be careful, why Sony has to be careful about who they talk to. And I'm guessing this means from a very competitive marketplace, it means that if they talk to a company, it might then alert the competition that this company is worth investing in. So they have to be absolutely sure that they want to buy the company because if not, their competitor, Microsoft, and potentially in the future, Google, will end up buying them. So about that PS5 info, apparently developers are loving making games on the PS5 because it is so easy to get games running. Ryan said this, one thing that makes me particularly optimistic that what we're hearing from developers and publishers is the ease in which they are able to get cold running on PlayStation 5 is way beyond any experience they've had on any other PlayStation platform. We all know about the PS3, it was notoriously difficult to develop for because it had that custom chip, because it had the cell processor. But with PS4, it became suddenly significantly easier using AMD and the x86 architecture. So hearing that now the PS5 is even easier, this means that developer can convert a game or can create a game and it will be a much easier, much more productive process, much faster. And this is what developers like and it's more likely to make the smaller indies make more games for the platform. Sony goes on to promise that there is plenty more PS5 news to announce. Roll on 2020. So what do you make of all that? Tell me in the comments, hit the like button and subscribe for further updates. Cheers.